Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the concept of electron configuration and SPDF notation. We're going to start by recapping the quantum mechanical model of the atom that we've just recently introduced. We're going to remind ourselves about what we mean by electron configuration, and then we're going to introduce what we call the SPDF notation, this way of writing out an electron configuration in light of what we now know. So, thinking about the quantum mechanical model, that also known as the electron cloud model. Okay, so remember that when Bohr pictured electrons orbiting around the nucleus like planets around the sun, with the introduction of quantum mechanics and quantum theory, we recognise that electrons orbiting is much more random and chaotic. And actually it's only really appropriate for us to define a particular area or cloud where that electron might exist. So this space is just the space where electrons can be found rather than a defined orbit. And that each of the, the, the shells that Bohr had proposed, we actually say they consist of being made up of orbitals in particular shapes. So each orbital holding a pair of electrons in a particular space around the atom. And we have S, P, D and F, which you can't see on this image, as different shapes and types of orbitals. Depending on the shell, we have a certain number of different orbitals. And so now remember that we, we introduced this idea of electron configuration, a way of writing down the number of electrons in each energy level or each shell around that atom, consistent with Bohr's model. Okay, so we've, we've seen a diagram like this before, which shows the structure of the electrons and the electron shells around a sodium atom. And we see that we have two electrons in this, the first row, uh, the first shell, eight in the next row shell, and then one in the last. So we write an electron configuration of two, eight, and one with commas in between. But we've just introduced this idea saying that Bohr's model of the atom is not actually the most correct. That this kind of concept gets us a certain distance, we can work with it, but actually that there is a more accurate and more nuanced but more complex way of understanding atomic behaviour. So what we need to do is to rethink electron configuration in light of this new information. How can we adjust it in order to better describe where electrons are found and how many? And so this is because this ultimately comes back to this idea of sub, the different orbitals, the different you know, sections of these shells, and the fact that when these electrons are placed in the orbitals, remember in pairs, and we do them with like up and down arrows in each box, that these fill in a specific order. And so we want to make sure that we can describe where they are. And we need to show which orbitals contain electrons, which ones don't, so that we can leave them out and we can include the ones that do. So, what we do is we use what's called SPDF notation as a way to actually show in where the electrons are. It's more specific and it has three kind of key bits of information. So, each kind of section looks like this. Now, this is not the complete package. This would be the electron configuration for helium, but for bigger atoms we use this same sort of structure. So, there's three things. There's a 1, an S and a 2. So, the first thing is that the 1 response corresponds to the energy level of the shell. The first shell, second shell, third shell. So one all the way up to, you know, pretty much seven, because that's realistically, that's as far as we fill. The S tells us which type of orbital that we're considering. So this is an S, or it could be a P, D, or F. And this, the two corresponds to the number of electrons that are in that orbital. So it could be from zero up to, you know, 10 or 14, depending on which type of orbital we're considering. Remember that for an s orbital we can only fit 2, so that the biggest number you would have to write here would be 2. p is 6, d is 10, and f is 14. Okay, but so what this does is that it says that in the first shell, in its, the s orbital in the first shell contains 2 electrons. So that information gives us far more value and far more power than just saying it's 2. Okay, so now if we think about Think about our sodium atom that we drew an example of before. So just reminding you that it has 11 electrons and that for our, we had our standard electron configuration of 2, 8 and 1, we saw that just before, and that this is where we would position the electrons in our orbital filling diagram that we've seen before. Okay, so 2 in 1s, 2 in 2s, 6 in 2p, that is 2 in each of these three boxes, and then 1 in the 3s. So what we would do is we'd use that same principle we've just developed to say, okay, what we would have here is this electron configuration. So 1s, 2, 2s has 2, 2p has 6, and then 3s has 1. 
Now, if you look at the numbers that we have here, the two, two, six, and one, if we add those together, we get 11, which is consistent with what we know. But now we have this extra information that helps us to describe where those electrons are. It also helps, you know, there's a lot of things further down the track that this can help us to explain by knowing exactly where things are, okay? And so some other examples, you know, thinking about lithium, which was two and one, we can now, you know, put it as one S2, two S1, oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, and so on through these other examples. Now selenium is one that's quite interesting here. So I picked that one because we have a significant number of electrons here. We've got 34 specifically. You can notice that its SPDF electron configuration is quite long because we need to be more specific there. And I'll show you a shortcut that we'll use in a second. But for now, what I want to draw your attention to is this idea that we make sure to write all the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours together in our um, in the way we write it but the reality is that remember from our diagram that we did back a few a couple of slides ago we saw that they don't fill in this order necessarily the 4s electrons fill in before the 3d electrons for example okay and so we don't write them in filling order we just group them by shell order so just be careful there it's not always the very last one at the end which has been filled last Okay, but while you're getting used to it, it might be still useful to write them out in their filling order and then you can rearrange it or rewrite it. Okay, so just a, a word to the wise there. Okay, so now with our selenium, so what we notice if we rewrite it over here is that we can say, all right, well, there's actually a whole bunch of a shortcut that we can write because this whole, uh, and simplify it by looking at the structure of the nearest noble gas. We see this section in red here is the same electron configuration as we have for argon, which is the, the noble gas just, you know, kind of just that bit lower down than where selenium is on the periodic table. So what we can do is say, right, well, let's call that just AR. Let's just call that the argon section like this. And then what we can do is we only need to write out what comes afterwards, the 3D10, 4S2, 4P4, because that's really the bit that's more relevant, that you know, all the preliminary stuff has been filled in ages ago, and so then we can just um, add in this last section. So often you will see um, it written like this way as a bit of a shorthand or a simplified way to make it faster and easier. Okay, so we recapped the quantum mechanical model looking at its subshells and orbitals, S, P, D, and F, seeing that they're the places where electrons can be found, or this, the boundaries uh, and these places where electrons might be, and that they take up a particular shape. We saw that we reminded ourselves about our standard electron configuration using numbers and commas, but we recognise that that doesn't really fit with the quantum mechanical model anymore. It's too simplistic. And so we need to introduce SPDF notation like 1S2 with those three bits of information that help to describe it better. And we worked through a couple of examples to show you how to do it. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.